Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video and welcome to the video which I haven't done in almost two years I guess, the raw videos. The videos where I don't discuss any tech or I don't discuss what's happening in the world, I just talk to you directly and I haven't done in that in the last two years. It was really a busy couple of years in the life and uh, finally I am free and I have enough of free time that I can talk to you personally and have a one-on-one -on -one discussion with you. So this video is all about sharing what I did in the last two years, what I studied, what I learned about that. And this doesn't mean that we haven't done anything on the channel itself. I'll walk you through that what all went onto the channel, which was also a pretty crazy ride. But what's coming up for this channel is going to be much, much more crazier. And for which I want to prepare you in advance that, hey, this is all going to come up uh, on this channel and you'll be all surprised and happy to know all of that. Uh, just to give you a brief overview, uh, let me just share or just show you, tell you that what's happening on my channel or happened. If you go and look at the playlist of this channel and look for the long videos, so there is a playlist named as uh, long videos. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking to name it. Uh, but if you'll notice, there was definitely a TypeScript series which blew away uh, everybody's mind. It it received very well response even on the Free Code Camp as well. Yes, I donated that series on Free Code Camp as well. Uh, well received by the community. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Next.js happened. Uh, we pushed a lot of videos on Next.js and in fact, you loved this a lot. Uh, in fact, the same series also was donated to Free Code Camp and I got a great response uh, outside of India as well for this series. And then uh, this Kubernetes and Docker also happened. Uh, only a handful of people watched that videos probably uh, we didn't did enough of the marketing or hype of that videos but still those who wanted to learn uh, learned very well from the docker net docker and the kubernetes videos very well very practical approach uh, we built a couple of uh, more like c++ 11 hour video uh, probably you didn't know about it but yeah uh, we posted an almost an 11 hour video on c++ and then we recently did finished our React series, complete React from scratch to the project level and another final project, uh, which is a mega project on React and App, right? Uh, there were definitely more videos, like on the engineering side. You guys loved those videos. Uh, we discussed a couple of case studies, read a couple of blog articles and all of that. Uh, this was all that happened in the last year. Uh, this year is going to be a bit different. First of all, let me share that. Uh, I, my initial thought was that, hey, even in the last year, I thought that, hey, this next year, I'll be reaching out more on the cloud side of the world. I'll discuss more about Azure. I'll discuss more about AWS. And that was that was the initial thought. Uh, but then somehow, I just fall in love with the cloud. I, I cannot just express this in the word. But it was so mesmerizing for me to understand that how does this cloud tech work? And... If you, if you just look at from my perspective, this is a fascinating world. This is the world where you can easily fall in love. And I did exactly the same. I fall in love with the cloud technology. After the programming concept, I think something which helped me saying that, hey, this is the revolutionary thing. This is going to change how we use our computers after programming is the cloud tech. And you might say that argue that, hey, this is not the cloud. This is AI. But my counter argument is, hey, even to run smoothly all these AI operations, you need solid background in the cloud. All these GPUs, all these training, uh, it's not really possible to do them in the system which you own. You need mega systems for that. And those mega systems are being uh, monitored, captured, and uh, being used through the cloud tech itself. You might be a fan of AWS, Azure, or GCP, or something else. Uh, doesn't really matter. So at the initial phase, a couple of my close friends and relatives, I helped them to uh, crack the AWS exam and successfully did that. I helped them in understanding the concepts and teach them and learn about how these exam patterns and they they passed with the flying colors. And I'm, I'm not talking about the basic exams, the high-end exams of DevOps and all these things. Uh, it was fun to teach them and I wanted to teach all this thing uh, to the world as well. But then I realized, oh man, I'm probably not ready yet. I, I should spend more time with it. And that's when I enrolled in master's program for the cloud computing. It's almost my third semester and the final semester. The final one is just the dissertation and uh, submitting your project, which I've already done. 
So this is technically my final semester, which is going on uh, on the 2nd of Jan. That will be completely over. Uh, so I enrolled myself in a master's program. And I think that was the right decision. Although I would say that still in the college, there are not enough uh, faculties with the expertise in the cloud that they can teach the proper subject. But the curriculum, at least what I studied, was crazy. It was so much good. I enjoyed that. And one advantage that I still think uh, after enrolling myself in the master's was that, you know, I would have never studied these subjects if somebody was not forcing me to study them. I would have just learned the cloud. Uh, but since I was enrolled in a proper academic program, I studied more subjects like advanced networking. I would have never touched that. Advanced operating system. I would have never touched it. Or uh, subject, there were more subjects uh, similar to that, like advanced data structures and algorithm, advanced DA, and uh, some subjects like HR. I would have never touched the human resource <laughs> subject, uh, but still I was in master's. So just to get those uh, credits, I had to study them. There was no option. So I think that was a good decision. Now, on top of that, I'll share some of the exam, like what was asked to me in those exam. And that will give you the idea that how much formally studying the subject have given me the knowledge that obviously I will share with all of this to you, with you as well. But look at this. Uh, these are some of my exam papers. And I'm not going to show you the exact question that came up, but there is also a philosophy of the paper, which is written at the top, that will help you to understand that what kind of in-depth I went to study this. Uh, the first of all, identify the philosophy, architecture, and practical use of virtualized data center in cloud computing environment. So teacher or the faculty have to craft a question based on this philosophy for the first question. Crazy, you know. And the second is uh, present fundamental skills and technique in optimization of cloud storage. So you need to know in and out of your storage because anything can be asked. And surprisingly, there are not good books. In fact, no books which is for which my curriculum was there. And I was surprised that, hey, there's no books around it. You have to go through with Azure. In fact, uh, one surprise that I got is you don't have to study in your curriculum just about AWS or Azure. I was forced to learn about the Oracle Cloud and IBM Cloud. I would have never studied them. And even in my exams, one of the exams, I was asked about uh, ESX. Like, who asked that? Like... I am pretty sure if there would be some student who have never worked in the industry, these questions are very, very tough for him. Solve common problem that can be encountered during the design and setup of backup slash recovery and replication solution virtualized environment. Godness. I don't know if you have ev if you have never worked in the cloud environment, you cannot solve these questions. Another one. Build understanding of key privacy concerns in storage strategy and governance security and regulation in the cloud security management. Man, this is just a first, first exam paper. I'll, I'll show you one more that I have just to give you a brief idea that how complex things can be. Like the very first question, sorry for leaking the question. What are the performance metrics of a CPU? Like in the cloud, in the virtualized environment. It's not just about threads and uh, the course. You have to go beyond that. The first uh, philosophy based on which you have to put the question and student have to answer this is identify and explain basic concept and key performance matrices of virtualized computing resources. You got that? No, I'm, I'm pretty sure most of you don't get it. Build understanding of statistics involved in virtual networking security architecture and its configuration. Jargon, isn't it? That's what I'm saying about I can demystify all of this jargon to you now in a clear to understand language. And that is all thanks to the masters and study that I did for the entire two years, almost one and a half year. Uh, another one, here is, here is more fun one. Formulate the core issues in troubleshooting and protecting environments such as authentication, authorization, privacy, and interoperability. Like who can answer that? Here's the final one. Uh, solve common problems that can be encountered during virtual machine and virtual storage migration. And that is where I can say a lot of the knowledge and skill which academics has given me, I can implement them. So I live in this unique position where in the cloud, I don't just have the knowledge of either the theory or the practical. I come from a mixed blend where I do understand uh, what are the requirements, where the research work of the cloud is going on, what is being taught in the academics, as well as uh, since I've been working for like so many long years on the AWS and Azure and GCP, 
I understand these things. I build products on them day in and day out. I understand them. I teach them. So this puts me in a unique position where I can teach you a lot. And now I think uh, I'm at an exciting position where I will help you to crack a lot of AWS exam. And yes, finally, we are starting that journey. So, so far in this channel, you have seen that we have put a lot of coding videos, a lot of few DevOps related videos like on Docker and Kubernetes and bits and pieces. But now officially we can begin our journey of learning the cloud computing in a way that you can crack your exams. Yep, that, that's the fantastic and fun part that uh, from the very next year, I'll help you to study for the AWS exam. Together, uh, I'll share my notes. I'll walk you through which each step by step and the philosophy behind cracking those exams. The very first exam that we are starting is the Certified Cloud Practitioner, uh, uh, the version two that we will be studying. Uh, so yeah, I know there is a newer version of it, but don't you worry, I'll cover that. I'll walk you through with enough of the questions that are being asked in the exam. I'll give you enough of practical as well as theoretical knowledge that is required for that. And you will be blown away by how much the cloud can be. And if somebody is a teacher who knows these stuff, can actually uh, make you fall in love with the subject again. Uh, so that's all. That's all I was doing for the last almost two years, studying day in, day out about the cloud. And finally, I think I'm at a position that uh, I can share all of this knowledge with you. Uh, this was the first portion which I wanted to share as a raw take with you. Another portion is... Uh, these days, when you are studying the masters, it's not like you are just studying the cloud itself. There are some additional subjects with you and you have to study them. And this gave me an opportunity to learn about the subjects which are uh, like machine learning. I didn't study the machine learning from the theoretical side much. I, I studied the machine learning part uh, from an applied machine learning part. So we discussed a lot about the uh, theories and concept about things like LLM models, lang chains, how to use them, how to put them. Uh, and of course, you can do all of that in JavaScript too and Python too, of course. So I, I wrote a lot of Python code during my academics. Uh, you have to. There is no other option. There are a lot of things and tools which actually allows you to write code only and only in Python. So I had no other option. And that's where I became the became a really big fan of Pydentic. Oh man, Pydentic is so good and so amazing. I think if you're learning Python and you don't know Pydentic, I mean, you're missing out a lot. So I think now... I can lead you into that direction as well, where I can help you to not only just learn Python and understand it, uh, but understand the core principles behind Pydentic as well. And this will leverage you to do so much more in the cloud. Uh, yes, uh, these videos are raw. And one more thing, uh, which is pretty decent and good announcement. Uh, I was busy in a lot of things uh, during my startup acquisition, uh, then moving back here in Jaipur and studying the cloud and all of that. Uh, but here's the good news. Uh, we are starting our live sessions again. So Saturday Live is officially back uh, from the next year. Uh, every single Saturday, just like always, uh, at 9 p.m. Every single Saturday, according to Indian time, we will be hosting a live session where you can ask questions. I'll be answering them. Have a general regular discussion, just like a podcast. Uh, we'll be naming this not as Saturday Live, but as a Saturday podcast with audience uh, because the mic is of that quality. Uh, the audio is of that quality, video is of that quality. So let's call it as uh, podcast with people. <laughs> yes, that's what we are calling. And every single Saturday, just join me up and we'll be having so much of fun. <laughs> so uh, these are all the raw takes that I wanted to share. A lot of good information, juicy information. Another thing that we'll be starting on this channel is uh, now exploring the blogs. I realize there is so much of knowledge in the articles and blogs that these companies are putting up, right from Zeroda to Discord, Netflix, uh, Disney Plus. They are putting so much of knowledge and information that you can learn so much out of them, not only just about the cloud and the cost optimization, but also in the perspective of a system designing some advanced part of which uh, particular thing is causing the bottleneck, uh, how you mitigate them. There's so much more to learn about them. And I think together we can learn so much by reading these articles and blogs. So expect them as well. And of course, we'll be continuing our engineering side uh, on the videos as well. Uh, that obviously will happen. Apart from this, uh, there are a few uh, projects as well. And this is a long year plan. So don't expect this to come in within January or February. This is a long list of plan. Uh, we are also focused on some of the big projects as well, uh, both front end and back end. Uh, so we'll be having that kind of a fun in regular. So coding is just now a fun for me, which I enjoy doing uh, rather than just uh, may, may having a core focus on that. Uh, so the next year, we'll be having a core focus on making sure that I put enough of material on this channel 
that you at least at the minimum side uh, cross two to three certificates on AWS. That's a bare minimum. Uh, but definitely we'll be discussing Azure and more of these stuffs. But yes, my goal is to make sure that my audience at least clear two to three certificates just by watching these videos on AWS. That's that's the goal for the next year. <laughs> Only this much I want. And if I'm able to do all of this, I think that's a great success. That would be great. Anyways, uh, so in short and in summary, uh, we'll be having a lot of AWS related material this year. I'll help you to crack a couple of AWS exams this year on this channel. Uh, we'll be posting a bit videos on the Langchain and a couple of other techs as a full stack projects as well. Uh, Saturday Live is back, uh, but we'll be calling it as Podcast with People, uh, and that will be there. Saturday night, 9 p.m. Uh, wait for this from the very next year. Uh, these are all the summary of what we'll be doing. Uh, again, feel free to share the video. If you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead, do that, because a lot of juicy information is about to come here. So let's start the journey with a fresh take on this channel. Super excited to get started with you. With fresh energy, uh, with fresh people, uh, just spread the word around and let's get started.